OpenAI OM Mini just came out, and it's said to be the most cost-effective model at math and coding. And it certainly looks promising, just from a coding benchmark perspective. Looking at the human eval score, OM Mini is scoring 92.4%, a little bit higher than GPT-40. Um, what's worth noting is that Anthropic Clot Sonnet 3.5 actually only scored 92% um, on human eval, the same Kony benchmark. So if we're just looking at human eval, the OM Mini is actually performing better than Sonnet 3.5. So let's find out today. And we're going to do something that's a little different. We're going to ignore the benchmarks for a second, and we're not going to be building a snake game, which is probably not what developers are actually doing on a, on a daily basis. Instead, we're going to be looking at a coding task. Uh, we're going to be implementing a feature in a code base that's more similar to what developers deal with on a regular basis. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is the project we're looking at. It's very similar to Jira. Um, basically, you have different tickets that live in a list, and you have multiple lists living on a board. Right now, to delete a task, you have to manually click into it, and click Delete, and Confirm. Um, the feature we will be trying to implement is the ability to, ability to bulk delete uh, multiple tickets at once. So we want to be able to add a checkbox on each of these tickets, select multiple tickets and delete at once. So let's switch over to VS Code and take a look at what we're dealing with. We're going to be testing in two different cases. In the first test case, we are not going to tell the AI which files to look at. We're going to rely the uh, AI's capability to search through the code base and find the relevant files. Take in this prompt, uh, which just says add the ability to delete multiple issues from the project board. We should be able to select different issues using a checkbox. And we want to add a button that deletes all of the selected issues. And in the second test case, we're going to give a fixed context, which means we're going to simply specify the exact context the AI should consider. We're going to try both and see how the AI does with OI Mini and with um, Sonic 3.5. A quick note about how I'm going to be evaluating the generations. Generally, I'm looking for three things. One, did the code actually work? And oftentimes I find that the AI will get it 80%, 90% correct, but it requires some manual fixing to make the code run. So the second thing is how much manual fixing was needed to get it to work. Because at a certain point, the amount of manual adjustment no longer justifies using AI for a particular task. And the last thing, once I get everything working, if I'm looking at the solution as a whole, is it reusing code and following my existing conventions? Or is it doing its own thing and not following what I already have in the code base? Let's get started with first using O1 Mini. And here we're using the Easy Code extension in VS Code. Uh, we have Ask Codebase toggled, which gives the AI context in the entire code base. And as you can see, we're using OI Mini for this uh, for this generation. Just all manually apply the changes, and then we'll do a quick diff to see, you know, all the changes it made. Okay, looking over the Git changes, just a very quick summary. It decided to add a bulk delete component, which is nice. It includes a handler to actually deal with the deletion. And it does reuse my existing API endpoint, putting that under a promise all, which is okay as a solution. It uses that bulk delete component, adds some logic for selection, um, has the new state that we are looking at earlier, using the bulk delete, and then it does uh, some property propagation down to the list component, um, and then to the list component, and eventually to the issue component. Here it added two additional styled component, the issue container and checkbox, and added the checkbox within the issue. So this is all great, unfortunately, um, if we go back to the actual program, we find that 
there's actually no checkbox. Um, checkbox does not show up. The there's also no button uh, to delete any selected issues. So, in my opinion, this version did not work. Um, yeah, it simply just doesn't have doesn't have the basic functionalities. All right, next I'm looking at Claude Sonnet 3.5 using the as code base capability, which again gives the AI model contacts of the entire code base. And just looking over the solution overview, it already looks to be missing some key changes. Specifically, it doesn't include changes for list.jsx. So within the issue component, it's adding the prop types, which is good. And it's adding a checkbox, which actually does not exist. It's not a style component yet, so uh, I don't think it has added code for that. And inside the list component, new props passes passes down to the issue component. That's fine. And then it goes straight to the board JSX as a new state, which is fine selection logic that's okay it added the bulk delete here and I know this API endpoint does not exist so I'm expecting to to actually implement this endpoint in the back end if it decides to create a new one um, it has a bulk delete issues component that's new and that component is simply a button that's okay but right so it, you know it's aware of the fact that you need to implement the back end API endpoint for bulk delete well I was hoping that it would do it uh, in this case it would require follow-up uh, prompt to actually generate that code which is fine but I don't for the sake of fairness um, you know I wanted to see the quality of the answer on the first on the first go um, so overall I would I already know this code isn't going to work um, it will require quite a bit of fixing up, both in adding the styled components as well as implementing the backend logic. Um, and overall, I would say it's not reusing code. Um, I don't like how it added a bulk delete issues component just to be a button. This seems to be a little bit of overly complicated, in my opinion. So I would say it failed that as well. So let's just put that in here. No, it did not work right away. It probably requires quite a bit of fixing and it's not reusing code or following conventions. Generally, I don't like the, the high level of this uh, solution. All right, in the next test, we're going to give AI fixed context, which means we tell the AI exactly what files to consider as context using the exact same prompt we used earlier. And here we'll be trying the O1 mini model first. Let's see what, what it comes up with. I should mention that with the O1 mini models right now, there's no streaming support uh, if we're using the API. So in this case, the AI is going to generate all of the tokens, all of the output tokens at once before it's able to return anything, which is why it takes quite a while. Right, I'm done applying the changes and overall the solution that it chose looks very similar to the O1 mini version we tried earlier with the code base context. Let's take a look at what it actually looks like. We can see that it does have the check boxes. Let's give that a try. And I like how it's updating the number of selected issues. However, clicking on it doesn't seem to do anything. Let's take a look at the console. 
failed prop type, the prop render link is marked as required in confirm model. Okay, so it didn't get a confirm model right. Um, I would consider this a minor bug. Probably if we feed this to the AI, it will be able to fix it. But for the sake of this test, I would still consider this to have failed the, um, the first criteria. So let's take a look there. And given the nature of the bug, I don't consider a minor fix. Um, for reference, the type of fixing I'm talking about here is uh, some syntax or a missing import statement or something that can be very easily fixed. In this case, I imagine I'll have to rework the confirm model. So I'm gonna say fail and did the solution reuse code and follow follow existing conventions? Yes, it did. So that's really good. Um, so far, it seems like OAuth Mini is very good at following my existing patterns and reusing code. Uh, although I'm not sure how much of this is due to the fact that I gave it a lot of reference to look at. But to wrap things up, let's take a look at how Sonnet performs when we specify context. So we ran the same prompt with Sonnet and the solution overall looks quite similar to this solution that Omni, um, Owen Omni gave. Um, but it's interesting to know that here it did provide a render link, which was a required property. So I'm hoping this would work. But other than that, it's fairly similar. Um, just creating a new state and passing down that state down the chain to the issue component and it reuses my existing uh, deletion API endpoint to handle the bulk delete. So not the most um, elegant solution. I, I like the earlier solution that Sana gave where it recommended implementing a different API endpoint to hold, handle the bulk delete, but this is an acceptable solution in this context as well. Let's see how this works. And let's select a couple of issues. Don't really like, don't really love where this button's positioned, but we can fix the UI later. Um, and we can select multiple issues. That's good. We can still open it. All right, the state is persisting. Okay, we have a confirm mode. Are you sure you want to delete two issues? Once we delete, it's gone for good. All right, delete. Voila, that actually worked. Let's try creating another one just to make sure this is not it getting lucky. Uh, here, okay, drag and drop still works. Right. Okay. All right, this actually works. Oh, this is great. So going back to our simple criteria, um, Plot three definitely worked. There was um, almost no fixing required. And I would say it passed and followed my, reused my existing API, confirm modal, as well as toast. As a quick recap, Quad three or five sonnet with specified code base contacts was the only method that produced a working solution. So in this case, OI Mini didn't perform better than Cloth 3.5 Sonnet. But keep in mind, this is a very limited test case. There are a couple of things that we didn't really look into. This example doesn't really represent the full variety of tasks that developers deal with. For example, debugging, refactoring, or simply understanding the code base. I can see how if there is even more complexity uh, I would suspect OM Mini will be able to use its stronger reasoning capabilities to provide more correct answers. 
We also didn't look at latency or cost per token from an output perspective. And lastly, we only used one turn uh, to see what the results are. So with a few follow-ups, we don't really know how quickly the AI can correct its own mistakes and provide working solutions. In the future, we will be doing more videos like this where we compare different models, different tools, different methods with real-world examples that are more representative of the actual work developers do on a daily basis. So if you'd like to see more of these videos, please like and subscribe. I'll talk to you next time.